Good morning to you all. Before I start this small lecture on dexmedetomidin, I request you all to subscribe my channel, share my channel, Pain Free Partha in YouTube. Today's topic is about dexmedetomidin. So dexmedetomidin, hydrochloride, it is 4 alpha 2 dimethyl imidazole. It is basically an imidazole. Eight times more specific to alpha 2 receptors than chlorine. This is what we want. It is more specific to alpha 2 receptors than chlorine by eight times. It's an alpha 2 receptor agonist. There are three types of alpha 2 receptor A, B, and C receptors. What we are concerned is about sedation, analgesia, and sympatholysis is alpha 2A and alpha 2B is about spinal analgesia and some sort of peripheral vasoconstriction and is about mood changes alpha 2C. So what we are more concerned is alpha 2A. It's an alpha 2 receptor agonist. So you can see this is a lot of alpha 2BA, alpha 2B, alpha 2A, alpha 2A is involved in bradycardia, sedation and alpha 2B is involved possibly in anti-shivering. There is some role of alpha 2B in diuresis. So basically we are concerned with alpha 2A, a sedation, anxiolysis, bradycardia and analgesia. This is alpha 2B may be clinically useful as an anti-shivering agent. Usually levoisomer is good, but in inverse given. Levomeditomidin is useless. Only dextromeditomidin is useful. So how does it act? It acts by alpha 2 agonist, that is alpha 2 stimulation, thereby decreased the CAM, potassium efflux, nerve hyperpolarization, decreased calcium entry. So it is nerve hyperpolarization by decreased CAMP and potassium efflux. This is what is the basic funda behind alpha 2 against. Alpha 2 is presynaptic and alpha 1 is postsynaptic. So we may get a negative feedback on this. So this is alpha 2 and this is alpha 1. Following intravenous IV, if you give, dexmeritomidin shows rapid distribution phase with a distribution half-life of 6 minutes and a termination elimination half-life of approximately 2 hours. Oral, no, but nasal and sublingual use is proved. Nasal is 1 to 2 mics per kg, onset of 20 minutes. It undergoes cytokine pre-450 group coordination, hydroxylation and excreted through the kidneys. So normally it is administered intravenously. So what is the root of intravenous? We all know 1 mics per kg over 10 minutes followed by 0.2 to 0.5 mics per kg per hour. The rates of infusion can be increased to 0.1 mics per kg per hour. So we will go this. 1 mic per kg is the dose. That should be given in 10 minutes followed by 0.5 mics per kg per hour, 0.5 mics per kg per hour should be the infusion dose. I am 2.5 mics per kg of dexmeritobidin has been used. Spinal 0.1 mics per kg, epidural is 1 mic per kg, peripheral is 1 mic per kg. So what you want to understand is basically loading dose is 1 mic per kg. Epidural is 1 mic, peripheral nerve block is 1 mic. Buccal is one mic, intranasal is one mic, only intramuscular is 2.5, spinal is 0.2. This is what is the difference. So almost all are 1 to 2 mics per kg. It's a partial agonist of the alpha 2 receptor clonin, but it is a complete full agonist. So you can already see it is 8 times more. Here it is 200, it is 1600. 7 to 8 times more specific for alpha 2 against. The maximum reduction, more lipophilic, you can see the octonal buffer partition coefficient. 
after clonidine, the MAC reduction is around 50 percent. Here it is 90 percent. Half life is around 9 hours. Elimination is 8 hours. Here you see 2 to 2.5 hours. Distribution half life is more than 10 minutes. It is around 5 minutes. So it is relatively fast acting. Full agonist. More specific to alpha 2 receptors. More lipophilic. More reduction in the necessity of agents. Fast excretion. These are all the advantages of dextromedin over clonidine. Now we can see this is alpha agonist, beta, alpha 1, alpha 2. This is adrenaline. If you go here, this is noradrenaline. It does no action on beta 2. This is noradrenaline. Now we see this is terbutaline, salbutamol. This has got more action on the beta 2. Now we can see isoprenaline has got no action on alpha 1. It is predominantly beta. But you see oxymetazorin, what we give as nasal drops, this is predominantly alpha. See, phenylephrine is predominantly alpha 1. Phenylephrine is predominantly alpha 2. Dopamine is beta 1 and beta 2. So dopamine, you see here, so many. Ephedrine is alpha 1, beta 1, beta 2. See here, phenylephrine. So, where we stand now, this is what is dexmeritomidin, alpha 2 agonist, more specific. What are the clinical applications of this? Perioperative hemodynamics. Now, because it has got, we you know, all the actions. Number 1 is analgesia. Number 2 is sedation. Number 3 is bradycardia. Number 4 is hypotension. Number 5 is anti-shivering action. These are all some of the actions. The other actions are relatively not that much clinically significant. Now, if you give perioperative hemodynamics, just give one shot of 0.5 mics per kg. Your intubation response is blunted. No reflux tachycardia as inhalational agents. 0.5 blunted extubation response also. But here, hypotension and bradycardia are the important problems. Where we need it, for example, used for deliberate hypotension. Yes, this is necessarily one of the choice drugs, one of the choice drugs in patients if we want to have or if we want to produce deliberate hypotension. Dexmeritomidin is an effective and safe agent for controlled hypotension. This is what I told. There is a central sympathetic action and a peripheral sympathetic action also. In cardiac, dexmeritomidin, in addition to blunting the hemodynamic response to endotracheal intubation, it also reduces the extent of ischemia during cardiac surgeries. It decreases pulmonary hypertension in mitral valve replacements. So, this is very important in cardiac patients. Blunting the response, extent of myocardial ischemia, all these two things are being acted upon by dexmeritomidin. Perioperative analgesia, 0.8 mics per kg, decreased morphine requirements. Infusion of 0.4, decreased morphine with approximately 70, superior to clonidine. But the problem is the duration is only 2 to 2 and a half hours, terminates its action by elimination almost. So, what we have now told, perioperative analgesia. Yes, if you give, your opioid requirement is less. It produces some analgesia. It produces blunting of intubation response. It produces blunting of extubation response. It produces better in cardiac ischemia response in patients with undergoing cardiac surgeries. Nausea and vomiting is less because it doesn't produce like proper fall, but it decreases opioids. Thereby, the nausea and vomiting is less. Analgesic effects of dexmeritomidin, where there is more incidence of bradycardia, but usually they are asymptomatic. But if we have combined beta blockers, then beware. Dexmet and chronic pain or hyperalgesia, it's not established as ketamine or something else. Now we have awake fiber optic intubation. This is, this is one of the challenges which we have overcome by the invention of dexmeritomidin. Because airway compromise is not there. 
respiratory depression okay but dexmet everything is not there loading dose start an infusion put the fiber optic with local and some there is anti silogoc effect also so this makes the choice drug for a fiber optic intubation i will take care of the topic of fiber optic intubation in some other time but you see it doesn't cause respiratory depression as opioids it does not cause respiratory depression as medazolam but it gives good analgesia and good sedation for you to put the fiber optic adjunct to ga a stress reduction equivalent to epidural but when epidural is risky why do you want to give epidural to decrease your stress reduction give an infusion of dexmedetomidine decrease the dosage requirements of propofol and tiva there is some sort of decreased dosage of rocuronium also exact we may not know but all these other drugs what we had already seen like propofol thiopentone ketamine all these drugs have got very minimal action on neuromuscular blockers they don't touch them but here you can see there are evidences to give to show that dexmedetomidine there is a decreased dosage of rocuronium it is sedation but it does not cause respiratory depression this fact is also clinically utilized in morbidly obese patients where we don't want narcotics much where this patient is already having mild oasis all these things start dexmed it causes sedation it causes some pain relief without much of respiratory depression high dose dexmedetomidine has been successfully used for sedation undergoing mri but we were of bradycardia we can start with 3 mics per kg over a period of 10 minutes on the cns surgery side we are now seeing the clinical uses or the clinical applications rather than the pharmacokinetics and dynamics we have already told that this is the pharmacokinetics and this is the pharmacodynamics in a short way for example it causes analgesia sedation hypotension bradycardia and shivering all these things but now we are going into the clinical tips like extubation intubation cardiac pain relief perioperative pain relief post operative pain relief mri sedation cardiac surgeries fiber optic intubation etc now dexmedetomidine provides stable cerebral hemodynamics this is very important no sudden increase in icp during intubation extubation or pin insertion it attenuates neurocognitive impairment delirium and agitation allowing immediate post operative neurological evaluation okay now if you are coming out of the neurosurgery you may have delirium this incidence is becoming decreased with the use of dexmedetomidine what is the use now we can assess we can assess how much is the neurological status post operatively have we changed have we improved has it worsened all or the better if there is no neurocognitive impairment yes that is what is the advantage of dexmed in neurosurgeries awake craniotomy for the resection of tumors or epileptic fossa the implantation of deep brain stimulators for parkinsons there is no interference with neuro monitoring you see here if you do eeg monitoring and if you give thiopentone everything is slashed so if you cannot use ketamine also so so many things are there but we can use dexmedetomidine because it does not interfere with neuro monitoring dexmedetomidine has a high lipophilicity set away so it passes through the placenta disappears fast so be cautious in pregnancy and lactation intrathecal also dexmedetomidine we should be careful in risk versus benefit loco regionals in nerve blocks dexmed shortens onset prolonged sensory and motor block duration is prolonged sometimes with 150 mics to 16 hours not due to cns effects or vaso constriction there is some local hyperpolarization memory of the nerve cell which causes all these things prolonged sensory prolonged motor blockage dexmed shortens onset but sometimes you can see very rarely if you give iv also it may prolong nerve blocks hypotension and bradycardia remains 
Now already we have told 1 mics per kg epidural, 0.1 mic per kg spinal, prolonged sensory and motor blockade. No major side effects is not there. Caudal additive in children, good results. 3 to 10 mics single dose combining with spinal local anesthetics, similar results. IV dexmet can prolong the sensory and main analgesic effects of spinal local. Now if you do spinal bupivacaine, if you think that the surgery uh, prolongs or sometimes the pain relief we want early post-op pain relief yes slightly you can give IV dexmed and prolong the spinal analgesia so these are all some of the intricate tips in using dexmeditomidine yes we can use it for buyer's blocks 0.3 mics per kgs addition better and prolonged analgesia reduced local anesthetics Possible protection from CNS and cardiac toxicity. But it has been done and proved only in upper limbs. Just add 0.3 mics per kg. Now, you know, 5 kilos means how much it is? 3 into 5, 1.5. 15 mics approximately for a 15 kg. Just add 15, 20 mics. And then you see the results. Intraarticular dexmed. Patients undergoing arthroscopic knee surgeries. Better post op pain relief, anti hyperalgesic effect and administered locally here, preemptive local infiltration, dexmed in the hernia surgeries, dexmed decreased emergency delirium after seroforine in pediatrics. See here, there are so many clinical values of dexmed. You can put intraarticular, you can put it inside the mouth, you can decrease IV, you can put to decrease the emergency delirium after seroforine. So these are all the multivarious uses of dexmed. Some other potential uses. Used successfully in the treatment of withdrawal from benzodiazepines, opioids, alcohol and recreational drugs, tetanus in ICU, preventing ethanol induced neurogenerations. As an anti-shivering agent, dexmeditomidine is superior to tramadol for shivering treatment due to higher effective rate of shivering control. Earlier onset of action, less recurrence of shivering, high incidence of sedation, low incidence of mask. See here, now it is able to control shivering better than travel. Recurrence is not there. Fast it controls shivering. All these things are there, but hypotension and bradycardia is there, which is not there with travel. Pediatric sedation, rectal, see 0 0.5, 0 0.5 max per kg per dose. Before the procedure, 3 mics per kg intranasal. Perioperative dexmed for outpatient cataract surgeries. A systematic review. Dexmeditomidine improved renal functions in patients with severe sepsis. So, patient is in sepsis, patient is in IC. We want ICU sedation. Yes, dexmed is on, but what are the advantages? It improved renal functions in patients with severe sepsis. Yes. It also has got an inflammation, anti-inflammatory effect, better recovery in patients with sectors requiring mechanical ventilations. Dexmeditomidine for reduction of AF and delirium after cardiac surgeries. Delirium is decreased, AF is decreased, two other poles. What are the side effects? Dexmeditomidine administered in high concentrations may cause systemic and pulmonary because it directly acts on the peripheral vas vessels. Sometimes it may cause hypertension. Bradycardia, dry mouth and nausea. See because even though the alpha 2 is to alpha 1 is 1620 is to 1. 1620 is to 1 rather than clonidin, which is only 220 is to 1. 8 times more alpha 2 against. Yes, yeah, still, if you give high dose, alpha 1 is going to act. So that means high doses may cause hypertension. Bradycardia, dry mouth, nausea, fever, all these things are relatively rare. What you get is hypotension, bradycardia. Rarely arthemias, rarely AB blocks, T wave inversions, angina. Neuropathy, synco, paresthesia, so many things are described, but all these things are rare in ideal clinical practice where we practice in scientific terms. 
there is an antagonist for dexmedetomidine. So, for example, now we have again dexmedetomidine type. Give atipamazole, a combination of dexmedetomidine. Yes, here you can see dexmedetomidine is useful as an analgesic. Dexmedetomidine is also useful as a sedation. Now we slightly add atipamazole and give both. Yes, you can titrate your sedation. And you can titrate your analgesia and bradycardia hypotension, etc. So that a combination of dexmed plus atimamazole, agonist, antagonist combination can be given as an infusion so that we can titrate the effects according to our whims and fancies. So what is it? I have already told it is dexmeritomidin. It is dextroisomer rather than levoisomer. What's the form of Already we are told IV. Yes, rarely we can use it as nasal and sublingual. Yes, it can also be used as epidural, spinal. So intravenous dose is start by 1 to 2 mics per kg or preferably 1 mic per kg over a period of 10 minutes followed by 0.2 to 0.7 mics per kg per hour. 0.2 to 0.7 microgram per kg per hour. Epidural dose is 1 to 2 mics per kg. The nerve block dose is 1 to 2 mics per kg. The caudal block is 1 to 2 mics per kg. Only the spinal dose is 0.1 to 0.2 mics per kg. Yes, on the hemodynamics, yes, we know it doesn't cause much of cardiac output changes, but it causes hypotension radically. Think about when it causes. It doesn't affect the heart. It doesn't cause myocardial depression, all these things. If we have planned our dose, and if you have planned our play dose, yes, it does not cause much changes. CVS, yes, we know. CNS, yes. Regionals, analgesia, sedation, pediatrics. There are a lot of potential uses like uses in recreational, alcohol, all these things. Aptamizole is an antagonist. Yes, we can combine both these drugs and use it 